Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Pereira. The President and the Vice President of India will actively participate in the Swachh Bharat campaign of first since the top two constitutional figures have historically kept away from government programs. The centre is set to organise a series of activities across the country in the run-up to Gandhi Jayanti on October 2nd with an eye on furthering its message on its cleanliness campaign, the Swachh Bharat Mission. While President Ramnath Kovind officially launched the Swachhata Hi Seva program in Kanpur today, media reports suggest that the Vice President M. Benkaya Naidu is taking a keen interest in planning the fortnight-long activities under the program. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze India's sanitation challenge. Joining me on the program today are Shamika Ravi, Senior Fellow, Governance Studies Program, Brookings, India. Shubhagato Das Gupta, Senior Fellow, Centre for Research, uh, po for Policy Research, I beg your pardon, and Priya Ranjan Dash, Senior Journalist. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. As always, I'd like to start with the lady first. Uh, you know, it's a staggering figure. Some of the mm. UN reports suggest that 60% of the world's open de defecation takes place in India. How do we turn that around? I think we have started to turn it around already, Frank, uh, through the Swachh Bharat Abhyan. Uh, through a concerted, it's, it's a margin, you know, it's a revolution which is being now initiated. Top down, of course, uh, but the trends are all in the right direction. Now, open defecation, you know, even if everyone has access to toilets, even if you have 100% access, and usage is even as high as 80%, let's say, though we are not there right now, mm. even if you have 20% that actually defecate around the villages, or you have open sewerages, you know, the evidence from research coming from Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, where a pilot was done in 2011, shows that, you know, the impact on children's health, particularly diarrheal diseases, parasitic uh, infections, etc., uh, is not that uh, large. So, we will really have to work towards eliminating this to really see the health benefits. That is the driving objective of this entire mission. Sure. You know, uh Shubhagato Das Gupta, do, do you believe that enough is being done and are we moving towards achieving the Prime Minister's dream of being open defecation free by uh, October 2nd, 2019? Are we moving towards that goal? Um, it means there's, uh, I, I, I am very appreciative of the program given that uh, as, as, as a sanitarian, we for ages have been looking for opportunities to get so much done on this subject which has always uh, been in the back burner of most policy uh, makers. Uh, so given the opportunity uh, uh, of this high level intervention and it being so much close, so close to the Prime Minister's heart, uh, a lot of the go government has mobilized around it. So the inter de uh, the departmental coordination, uh, uh, city, state and national government's priorities on sanitation is very encouraging. Uh, so uh, so for, for someone like me who's been working in the sector for a while, this is a huge opportunity uh, and very appreciative of it. Uh, however, lots more can be done. Hmm. And uh, uh, one of the key uh, elements of this is that not only government can solve this problem, it has to be collaborative with society and so uh, societal institutions. And as long as it is seen as only Prime Minister's dream, uh, not much progress will be made. Yes, there has been pr uh, progress in the construction of toilets, uh, but we've had this kind of progress in programs before. And we know very well that uh, just having access to a toilet doesn't mean that uh, we use them. Uh, there is enough evidence around a whole set of challenges in the sanitation sector. Uh, and uh, means in my understanding, uh, we don't even really understand very well what needs to be done. Mm. So, there, uh, so uh, moving into an implementation mode with this kind of intensity has uh, led to a whole set of new problems too that we need to uh, bring on the table uh, so that we can move forward in a more constructive manner. Sure. Dash, how successful has the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan been thus far? What are its biggest challenges going forward? I would say it's been, uh, like it's uh, already we've discussed, it's been uh, quite successful. In the last three years, access to toilets, in terms of uh, constructing new toilets, 
and all that, you know, so if uh, five crore uh, toilets have been constructed, that's quite an achievement uh, in three years. And we've had um, several states, not several really, considering that we, we had 29 states, five states at least have claimed to have moved uh, or to, to become open uh, defecation free. So uh, the, the progress, I would say, is considerable and as, as has been mentioned, now um, access to toilet me doesn't mean that uh, you're using the toilets and, uh, uh, and the toilets are uh, maintained to be usable. So uh, those uh, challenges, of course, are there. So as we go on uh, making more toilets, those challenges would remain and need to be addressed. But uh, uh, the more, uh, I would say that uh, as a, as a social uh, movement, uh, particularly the kind of program like the one that uh, uh, the president has launched today, uh, you know, the, these will contribute uh, to, 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 to the success of this program and to uh, really go on to achieve what the Prime Minister envisaged in 2014, August 15, when he announced the program of uh, getting India defecation fee by October 2nd, 2019. But uh, so even as this is going on, I think we need to uh, now uh, look at uh, uh, look at uh, the you know of of the obligation that is uh, imposed on the citizens of India. Hmm. And I would I would tell you that on the 11th, on the September 11th, uh, the Vivekananda, um, uh, you know the the 125 years of his Chicago's address. address yeah. Uh, what the Prime Minister said that uh, whether we have, who has the right to, to say Vande Mataram, you know, clearly, uh, you know, if you, if you are Paan Kha Ke Pichkari Marte Ho Jai, Jaisi Prime Minister Ne Kaha, you do not uh, have the right to, to say Vande Mataram. Hmm. Now, if you, if you, if you look at that, uh, even in the Constitution, as, as part of your fundamental duties, you, uh, you have to make India clean and so that imposes certain obligations. Unfortunately, I would say that if you, if you look at uh, the, the home, then uh, now more toilets are being built in rural India and elsewhere in urban India, access to toilet and that is happening. But what about the workplace? Do we have uh, uh, toilets, uh, access to toilets at workplaces. I would say that you need to look at now uh, making it somehow legally obligatory uh, to go with the, uh, you know, the, the, the fundamental duties of sure. citizens. So I would say that uh, look at uh, a, a law like, uh, like uh, the Factories and Establishment Act, for instance. Mm. Why is it that we can't have uh, a provision there to make it obligatory for factories and establishments to have toilet facilities for themselves, meaning their own employees, their customers visiting them, etc. If you look at our marketplaces, forget the modern um, malls, malls which have yeah. come up, but the traditional marketplaces, tier two, tier three cities and towns, and uh, uh, anywhere there mm. are establishments running. The establishment comes up and licensed and is doing business of all sort of business. Um, you know, they could be public sector, private sector, um, uh, they could be government right. establishments without any toilet access to sure. toilet for their own employees, for their own customers, others who are visiting them, others around them. So as a result, what do they do? They, then you cannot have open defecation free India. Right. So right. I think we need to uh, look into, seriously look into making it legally obligatory. Fair now, enough. I just wanted to tell you that there have been attempts at local municipality and other levels to impose fines on citizens who are doing. I'm, mm. not, I'm not suggesting that kind of a route because that's hardly successful on putting it on individual uh, citizens, uh, legal obligations or, uh, you know, giving fines and all that. Sure. I'm talking about the establishments that need to provide it, making it obligatory on them. Okay, fair enough. You know, on the other side of the con coin, there are, uh, you know, other pilots tried elsewhere as well, where they pay you actually for going and using a toilet. That's been done, I think, in, in Ahmedabad, if I'm not wrong, uh, and, a, and a couple of other cities as well.
Uh, you know, just taking the discussion forward, uh, Shamika Ravi, do you believe that there's only that much that the government and, you know, companies and organizations can do really, but it's also up to the individual to understand how to keep his premises or for that matter his house or whatever it is clean? Look, do you need a change in mindset? Absolutely. In fact, that's exactly the way to view this entire uh, movement and I keep calling it a movement because you see, initiation can be done through multiple different sources. I think industry definitely has a role to play. Uh, the kind of provisions that uh, Priya spoke about, absolutely. I think it's obligatory at the workplace to provide uh, access to uh, toilets. The government has made an you know, enormous initiative. However, eventually it is a behavioral change, uh, which can happen in coercive ways through law, through penalizing. Uh, it can happen through public uh, campaigns, uh, it can happen through the education system where children are basically brought into, uh, you know, the entire uh, fold. But, you know, everywhere, it is not just growth by itself that has led to people making rational decisions, even when it comes to their own health and hygiene. So, what we are saying is just focusing on growth and, you know, uh, uh, just increased income is not going to solve the problem. There needs to be a concerted effort to change behaviors. And that can happen in multiple different ways. Now, there's one uh, example which I really, you know, sort of like to cite because mm. it's very motivating, is that, you know, in the early 1900s, uh, Brooklyn, which is a part of New York, had, you know, it had increased very high infant mortality. You know, one in three babies used to die by the age of two. And it really took a, you know, a, a public health personnel of the name of Josephine Baker, who went about basically educating people on cleaning hands, cleaning their clothes, taking a bath. And these kind of things really have to be a social movement. Uh, but eventually the onus and the success will rest on citizens and how much they're willing to come out and participate in this. Some amount also has to be naming shaming and we shouldn't really, Priya, you shied away from saying that, you know, we must obligate citizens. But perhaps, you know, in places like Delhi, I don't think it's always access to facilities. It's a habit. Habits take a long time to change. Uh, it has taken centuries elsewhere, but... Sure, uh, you know, you've seen people urinating outside, to, to, you know, public washrooms that are there right in front of absolutely. you. I mean, how do you change that? Absolutely. I mean, when you have people like that, you can't really change and make India cleaner no, and better and cleaner. What, yeah. do you, what do you do when, for, for yeah, just miles together on National Highway, you, you do not have toilet facility. It is more than a behavioral thing. It's just access not available. So you, you may have a union minister with his, all his uh, security and terrorists, um, you know, uh, getting off and uh, uh, having to use, uh, you know, so uh, that's India. Now what do you do with that? You must make it, I think, legally obligatory for all establishments. There's not just not large industries or offices of uh, kind. Perhaps many of them who are, which are now having them. But look at, look at such things, uh, highways, and um, you know, you will have so many dhavas and other things without any basic toilet facilities. So those bus business establishments so, are there. Your point taken. Your point, your, your point well taken, yes. Yeah, I, I, I kind of uh, am enjoying this discussion at the moment because uh, it is not only about behavior change of individuals or families and households. It is also about behavior change of governments itself. So, uh, I mean, governments are good at doing certain things and not good at doing s uh, certain other things. But uh, you need this cooperation between the two, uh, the social uh, institutions and the government institutions, where both sides have been failing in, in providing for this uh, collaborative functioning. So, local government, uh, state governments can do a whole lot on providing drainage, making uh, connections to toilet more simpler, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, you know, in, in uh, ensuring that these public facilities are kept up uh, and usable, uh, a whole lot of stuff. While individuals will, will also need to change given uh, from where they come from, and, and uh, this varies across cities and states in a very uh, particular manner. Uh, and which is very part dependent on our historical tra uh, trajectories of how social institutions and state institutions have developed. Uh, but these need to be understood 
at a different scale and cannot be one behavior change campaign for the whole nation. Mm. Yeah? So understanding the dis and disaggregating our understanding and working with local governments and local leadership with stronger institutions at the state and with mechanisms of, the, uh, of societal institutions to take up some of this I I is, is I think another level that Swachh Bharat needs to transform itself. It can't be driven top down uh, by our top leadership alone. Okay, yeah, yes, sir. You know, th now, you know, from a purely economic perspective, let me just put the problem in front of you. That defecating in the open, if you start to look at the social cost and benefit of it, the costs are really in the form of negative externalities. Because even if you have a very small fragment of people defecating in the open, the social costs of it in terms of, uh, uh, you know, water and, and uh, uh, other kind of, you know, it, it gets uh, public health concerns, costs are very high. Now, yes. the minute you have a dissonance between cost and benefit, and there is a very large negative externality to open defecation, the solution has to be outside of, you know, within the market, which is why I constantly keep going back to there has to be some coercive measure. I think public campaigns and all are fine, but eventually to bring that cost down, you have to force people to change behavior. Let's not, let's not forget about the environmental damage that it causes as well. That's also a big factor. You know, President Dash, talking about eco economics of it, you know, are the funds available to, uh, to, to realize the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and also are the funds reaching the right people at the end of the day? First of all, no country, no economy can say that they don't have resources for as basic a thing like sanitation. So that's, that gets the first charge hmm. of a, on the resources of a society. First priority. Any society. Yes. So there, there cannot be any doubt about it. And as just been pointed out, the externalities, the negative on the economy of, uh, of, of a country is, is so much. And you know, today uh, you know that the Vice President has spoken about uh, how it le it's leading to stunted growth of uh, children, uh, both physical and mental. As a result, what is considered to be India's uh, single most important um, uh, window for, for growth and development, uh, which is the demographic dividend, the so-called demographic, that's, uh, it's uh, having a huge cost on the uh, uh, demographic dividend. So there is no question of not having resources. Hmm. You better find resources for it. Now whether the government alone should be doing it, government meaning governments, government, the state governments, the local government, municipalities, I, or the panchayats, I don't think so. That's why I say that it should be, you know, constructing toilet in our, in our own uh, homes it's obligatory on, on, the, on the homes, okay? Now, it's good that the government has come up with uh, for, for the people under BPL and all that, providing 10,000 rupees um, subsidy for people to be able to build their own toilets, which is, which is what is linked to uh, many of these things. And there has been an accelerated program in doing toilets in schools because we've, we've seen the economic cost involved with that particularly girls, children not, uh, you know, dropping out of school, from schools, yeah. yes. uh, not having uh, any, any toilet facilities. So clearly, if you, uh, you know, we need, this must be done. Now, who does it? The government alone shouldn't do it. Neither should it just be persuasion and the social movement. Clearly, we need that education and all that of educating people, of using, changing behavior and all that, but also, we need it to be a legal obligation. Just look at the case of, you know, you have a RAN International School um, incident where uh, school, uh, you know, safety of children in school, which uh, mm. has, we don't need those kind of incidents to happen to, uh, for some guidelines to be issued. Now it's been issued throughout the country right. about the security arrangements that should be done in the school. Do, why can't we have guidelines for, like I said, for business establishments, factories, sure. for every the establishment, uh, to, to have toilets. Right. And so there has to be a legal, and in any case, as I told you, it's our constitutional obligation as sure. citizens. Sure, fair it's enough. It's our yes. fundamental but, duty. But resources, remember, so that needs a, to be done. We, India is 
peculiar, it stands out because we are the only country where we have an obligatory CSR rule. And health and sanitation fall squarely in the ambit of that uh, law. Yeah. Now, you know, so you have the corporate sector which can also be a very large player in this. But I think, you know, in terms of the cost of open defecation, and of course, remember, sanitation right now we are viewing it from narrowly from the open defecation problem. Yeah. But you know what is the leading cause of death in Uttar Pradesh? The second leading cause is diarrheal diseases. You know, one of the leading reasons why diarrheal infections and diseases happen is exactly because of contaminated water. You know, that, that's what I was going to come to next, mm. you know, and I wanted to ask you, uh, Shubhagat, do, do you believe that all of us are putting too much importance or giving too much importance to toilets and open defecation-free India rather than concentrating on clean drinking water and that aspect of it is, uh, that aspect of sanitation as well? Means I, I guess uh, the pendulum has shifted very much to containing, uh, uh, containing fecal matter from entering the water chain. But, I, uh, but it's also uh, uh, means the most effective way to ensure uh, cleaner uh, drinking water availability. So um, I mean I uh, kind of fall on the direction that it's better to uh, the, the the economic cost of return from improved sanitation on the quality of water available in local geographies is pretty significant. It is a very uh, correlation with very high returns. So that, uh, that makes sanitation increasingly important. Uh, I am not very sure, I mean I actually am not, I am quite sure that uh, cohesion does not work. Yeah, it is not that it will. It is going to work in India. Uh, there are uh, there it, it it leads to whole sets of new inequality problems. They are p our sanitation workers uh, work under the most distress conditions ever. Uh, there are caste issues that we are all aware of, and uh, the sector has moved in a very peculiar direction. Uh, all of this needs to be corrected. And these, uh, these are not cohesive uh, corrections run by a government. I uh, mean, you can't uh, enforce that you will not uh, behave uh, badly to a lower caste person. And not in India. In India's case, so with India's governance capacity, that is not possible. So we have to, uh, we have to encourage people to come on to a vision in a much more collaborative function, wherein the government has to be the leader as it is, but concentrate on what it can do better, yeah? sure, not sure. try and do what social institutions should be doing. So, uh, so for example, triggering a social revolution uh, is not what governments are best at, at, at doing. Right. So, uh, so uh, you know, they, they can fund the research that needs to uh, explain some of this more easily to, uh, to communities and to social leaders, but uh, them trying to say that you know, we will ignite a social revolution, I think is, uh, we are mixing up roles okay. uh, of ours. Uh, okay. no, but here, yeah, we are, yeah. I think a we are quick, ignoring, closing comment. Yeah, I'm we are out ignoring of time. Uh, the role of society. You know, one of the reasons why in microfinance, uh, women repayment rate is 98%, it's peer pressure. And peer pressure is nothing but coercion. So if you can enforce good behavior through society, but through designing the process and the product, that's exactly, you know, it's not always the government that should be coercive. I think the, the onus is also on the society and as, uh, you know, civil societies in particular, educational institutions, sure. naming, shaming, I'm, I'm very happy to see children being brought into this right. uh, campaign because they have a role to play and they can educate their adults. I think that's the way forward. Everyone needs to come on board and we need a holistic approach with taking everyone forward as well with everyone's uh, involvement in hope in in helping shape a better and a cleaner India. On that note, I'd like to call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. I'd like to thank my guests, Shamika Ravi, Shubhagato Das Gupta and Priya Ranjan Dash for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's all the time we have today. See you again next time.